Hello everybody, welcome to the channel. If you haven't clicked subscribe yet, just do it, it only takes a second. Plenty more videos of the old van behind me, various motorcycles and building things. Really worth a look. Today's job, um, if you've been watching the previous videos, I'm halfway through rebuilding the engine for the van behind me, building the new one up. I'm waiting on parts for that. So, uh, a couple of videos ago, I built the new radiator pack for it. Uh, that's all brand new and ready to go in. So what I thought I'd do today is just get the old one out, see what everything's like bracket wise and all that kind of stuff, potentially slam that one back in. Um, I may pipe it back up, I may not, I don't know yet, it depends what the pipe works like. And uh, yeah, I'll do a quick video on that. So uh, what I've done so far, I did a couple of things just to get ahead. Uh, the first thing you have to do to get the radiator out of these things is remove the spare wheel and the carrier. The carrier has to come down. So that's over there on the floor, probably out of shot. But the tricky thing, that's just one bolt at the front, it drops down really easy just to get the spare wheel out. That's simple enough. But you have to take these off too. Now, they're quite a fiddle. So if you imagine this, this spare wheel carrier, the disc underneath there, that's sat underneath. And then to stop the wheel bouncing upwards, it has two of these over the top of it. Now that actually works quite well, but what you have to do is you have to remove them because the radiator won't obviously drop through them. This piece here actually forms the hinge on both sides on which the, uh, the spare wheel carrier comes up and down on. So there's a little R clip in there. You have to remove those, get a crowbar in, pull them out, then the, uh, then the spare wheel carrier itself will fall on your head like it did to me, and then you've got to sort of go up and unhook them, and then they're out of the way too. I'd have loved to have made a video of that, but to be perfectly honest, I've never done one before. So I didn't really know how they were going to come, and for two you wouldn't have seen anything anyway, but pretty self-explanatory, it's just a piece of bent wire, so that's, that just holds the, the wheel in to stop it bouncing upwards. So, they're off. Uh, the other thing I've done is, I had a look at the uh, top radiator mounts on the, uh, on the van just to see what they were like. There was only one, and look at it, that's horrendous. So I'm either going to... I've got to get one full stop for the left hand side, but uh, this one's, it's, a, it's completely, I can't believe it, it's disgusting, it's, somebody's like crowed it together with an old stick welder in, that's not going back on, so I've got to make two new of those up, but it doesn't matter, I can still get the radiator up and in position if I just swap around those at the top, like this is doing right now. So, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to bring the camera in underneath, I'm going to try and get it right at the back so you can see, I'm going to drop the bottom brackets off, and uh, that should be the radiator out after that. The other thing I should point out I've done, these vans are actually great for not getting dirty. The engine's all the way at the back, so all I've done, I've disconnected the water hoses at the engine, so all the water's flowing away outside, and it is only water as well, not antifreeze. Uh, so that's drained all this, and all my work area here is bone dry. Fantastic. Uh, right, I'll bring it in now, and uh, you can take a look at it. Okay, so we're underneath the van now. Um, this is going to be a very, very short clip, because you can't really see anything, but... There's the radiator as it's sitting in the van. This is behind the front panel. Uh, if I zoom in over there, that's one bracket. You see the two bolts. So like one and one and two just there. And then you've basically just got the same on the other end. Right there, one and two. Now a moment ago before I started the video, I actually disconnected the coolant pipes. I just, oh, actually it's a lie, I disconnected one of them. I'm looking at it, they should actually come down on the radiator. But uh, they just sit up there, so that shouldn't be a big deal. There's the other one. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to drag the camera back out, and uh, I'm going to finish that off, because I can't, I can't uh, get me on the camera underneath it at the same time. Okay, back in a tick. Okay, the radiator's out now, it's just a case of undoing those four bolts. It drops straight down, no drama, just straight down. Um, it did give me a couple of uh, ideas, it, it, it gave me a few uh, problems as well I think. Uh, I'm not going to put it straight in now, I've got a couple of jobs to do while it's out. First one being, well for one, these are the brackets. I think this one was for this side, that one's for that side. They just hold it up. But they're a bit dirty, they're a bit rusty, they could do with a lick of paint. So I'm going to do that, I won't put them back rusty, I'm not in a rush. Um, and the other thing, where the bolts actually go through there, they were actually nutted and bolted, you had to get your fingers behind the hole, and that was a pain. So I've actually got a big industrial riv nut gun, so I can drill the holes out a little bit bigger. And not, it's not one of these lazy tongue things, the silly little things you can buy from the hardware shop. It's a proper one like they use for 
for aircraft, you know, it goes bang and it really puts them in. So I'm going to put four of those in. This time it was easy, it wanted to play, it came apart. The next time I might not be so lucky. So I'm going to do that as well while it's out. Uh, but the radiator was absolutely cream, there's nothing left of it. So I'm glad I took it out. Um, I took out of it this. That's the uh, fan switch, believe it or not. This is triggered at two different temperatures. I can tell that because it's got three pins. So that means it's got a positive feed going in and at a certain temperature, around 70 something degrees, it goes to the first stage of the fan. As it gets hotter, it goes on to the second stage of the fan. So I don't actually know what the wiring is on these, so I need to come up with a diagram. That's actually really simple. I may even do another video on that. I don't know yet. But um, I'm going to take this home and play with it. I'm going to just do nothing more simple than you put a couple of wires on there and then you put it in, the, in a glass of boiling water. You know, you just get it hotter and hotter and hotter and just see which way it switches. Then you use this to switch a couple of relays and that's how you make the fans work on the radiator. That will be a complete video in itself. But for now, um, I'm going to wash these off. I'm going to paint them back up again so they look halfway respectable. We're going to put the rib nuts in and then we can put the new radiator back up again. But, you know, this is a long-term project. I'm in no rush to do it, so I'll come back in probably three or four days' time and we'll be ready to stick it back in again. Okay, so it's a few days later. Um, I've painted the brackets. They were actually better shaped than I thought. I thought it was all dust and, you know, rusty. It wasn't. It was actually just gone off wax or... So that's all done now. Uh, the other thing I've done, I'll bring the camera in so you can see. I've put a couple of wiring grommets in through the floor on the interior of the van near the gear lever. That's going to be to get the wires for the fans down and for the control wires for the, uh, the, the other thermostatic switch. Um, apart from that, underneath, as I said before, I've used the rivnut gun. We've got four rivnuts in the front of the uh, cross member now instead of having nuts and bolts. So that should make life a lot easier. I'll pull the uh, camera underneath and we'll put the radiator back. Okay, so we're underneath the van now. If I get in closely, you can see there in the front cross member. Before, you used to have to put your finger sort of behind here, try and get a spanner in to get the nuts undone. Not the case anymore. We've got these nice rib nuts in there, good and proper. I put a bit of paint around everything just to make sure nothing rusts up. I've got up there as well too, I don't know if you can see it. So the next job for me is going to be to slide the radiator back into place and uh, oof, put the brackets back. Sounds good. Back in a tick. And there it is finished. If I get in a little bit closer you'll be able to see the brackets and everything that were painted. I can get down there, there's the, uh, the one below. As you come off to the other side, there's the other one. So they all went in fine, the rib nuts worked absolutely great. And if you watch the video where I actually built the radiator pack, you can see just how close that fan's running. Now, it does wobble a little bit if I do this, because it's got no top brackets on yet, I've got to make some new ones, but it really won't go back much further. So, uh, there you go. As always, thanks for watching, don't forget to click subscribe. And uh, keep an eye out for next week because we'll be wiring all the fans up.